Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Monday. All right guys, so hopefully everyone is having a good kickoff to their week. And if you guys didn't check us out, Jason and I for Hot Messy Topics, then go back and be a part of the replay crew. We're actually back to talk about Mauricio Umansky and Kyle Richards because as of right now in the Bravo world, it just kind of seems like they are the gift that keeps on giving. And yeah, you better believe we're going to talk about it. So before we jump in, Kyle has a new post. And Mauricio is trying to hide the name of an investor, pretty much. We're going to break down the whole story. Smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And let's jump right in. All right, guys. So. I wanted to kind of break into this for a second because Mauricio and this whole lawsuit, this has been going on for a while now. And as you guys know, it just doesn't seem like it's ending anytime soon. Let me, if you don't know, let me just sort of break this down for you. So according to Reality Blurb, Mauricio Umansky recently filed a motion to keep the identities of investors involved in the controversial sale of a $32 million mansion in Malibu private. So many people are wondering, why is he trying to keep the names of the investors private? If I had to guess, and you guys might know better than me, but this is a total guessing game. I feel like the reason that he would want to keep them private is so that they will continue to work with him in the future. Because if he's going through this lawsuit and he ends up putting their names out there, that could be a big problem. And maybe they wouldn't want to work with him again. And if you have investors who are going in with you on a $32 million mansion, that means these investors have a lot of money, a lot of money. And who knows what else he has that they're tied up in. That could present a problem. But wait, 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 wait. As the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast member continues to fight back against a lawsuit claiming the sale was fraudulent, Mauricio begged the judge to prevent the potential release of the names of those he worked alongside. According to a November 21st report from Radar Online, Mauricio, who is in the midst of a separation from his wife, Kyle Richards, explained that the name of his passive in investors should be sealed to protect their privacy. And after a November 17th hearing, Judge Mark H. Epstein agreed, at least for now. During the hearing, the judge temporarily sealed the documents and requested that the developers who are behind the lawsuit against Mauricio file robust legal documents regarding the potential exposure of the investors. After all, the court has some doubt as to whether the names of the investors are all that critical to the motion or opposition. And if that is correct, the court might grant the motion in that respect. That's what the judge wrote. But the court is not sure of that. Defendants have already suggested that all of the investors were mere passive investors, although that was at least arguably not the case. Hmm. The judge also hinted that Mauricio and those suing him could be trying to make a deal with one another that is dependent upon the investors remaining under wraps. As to the settlement, the court will need to better understand what the nature of the privacy right is other than that the parties would like to keep the document confidential. And the court is not even sure of that as not all of the parties to the settlement have weighed in on the motion. This came from the judge. Now, as Real Housewives of Beverly Hills fans will recall, Mauricio was sued by the developers for allegedly ignoring their $40 million offer to buy a home previously owned by Teodoro Meng, who had the property seized after being caught embezzling millions of dollars from his home country of Equatorial Guinea, where his father is president. After the U.S. Department of Justice enlisted Mauricio to sell the seized mansion, Mauricio reportedly ignored the $40 million bid and instead purchased the home himself with his partner, Mauricio Oberfeld, later selling it for nearly $70 million one year later for a massive profit of $37 million. So this was a big deal. And it's kind of interesting to me because the developers, they didn't lose any money in this. They didn't lose any money that was in their hands. Let me just say that. They put a bid in. And in real estate, sometimes, well, one, you have to present all offers. I know that for a fact. But sometimes the sellers might not take the highest offer anyways. Sometimes they like the terms better. Sometimes they just want all cash. Sometimes they want certain stipulations. Have you guys seen, um, well, 
million dollar listing in Los Angeles. Sometimes there were people who were selling their homes and they're like, the only way I'm going to sell my home is if they sign a contract saying that they won't rip it down. This house has been in my family forever and I don't want to, you know, see it torn apart and a new bill go up. Or sometimes people will sell their home and say, as long as I can live in it until I die. There can always be stipulations. You can write anything into a contract. Oh, wait. I wanted to share this as well because I thought this was interesting. Kyle Richards with a message via her Instagram stories. So Kyle is talking about the fact that Mauricio was not, that he tried to be there for her after the passing of her friend, but maybe he didn't know how to. What the post said was, this is my intuition about what was is happening with Kyle. I believe she experienced depression and anxiety following the suicide of her best friend, Lorene. This loss was significant due to the closeness of the relationship and the nature of her death. That's how it kicks off. Okay. So losing someone as a result of mental health crisis will rock your world. And in some cases, your sense of self. I believe Kyle is experiencing survivor's guilt and carrying shame, blame that isn't hers to carry. And she put, please click on this and swipe through these posts. Everyone knew I was dealing with this. For whatever reason, it wasn't shown on camera yet. This will be addressed very soon. Continuing on, after this loss, I believe she expected emotional support from Mo that he was incapable or unwilling to provide. I think this left Kyle feeling disappointed, resentful, and betrayed due to her years of commitment and dedication to the marriage. I believe Kyle felt so many intensely painful and scary emotions that she realized she needed to do something with it. And she desperately wanted to avoid unhealthy coping mechanisms due to her family history of addiction. She put underneath this one. However, I do believe Mo tried to be there for me, although I'm not sure anyone knew exactly how to be. In psychology, it's called sublimation. And it's a defense mechanism that involves channeling unwanted or unacceptable urges into an admissible or productive outlet. This led to a focus on working out. Kyle's commitment to addressing her emotions in a healthy manner also led her to step away from alcohol. For years, she was an empathetic witness to her sister's alcohol addiction, and I think that she consciously wanted to do things differently. Facts. Number one, society is obsessed with alcohol. Number two, Living with alcoholism in the family tends to change your perspective of alcohol. The overfocus about Kyle not drinking is insanity. If someone else's behaviors around alcohol is a problem for you, that is a you problem. Ultimately, I think this is the first time in Kyle's life that she's living for herself. Initially, she lived for her mom and sisters, then her husband and children. And now is time for Kyle. Change is necessary and important. It's an important part of personal growth. And while metamorphosis is painful, it is the only path to freedom. Personally, I'm here for it. And I wish her nothing but love, support, and success. Okay. I mean, at least this kind of helps because a lot of people, and I'm just dissecting this for a second. A lot of people thought that Kyle Richards being on the show and not drinking and not working out especially her castmates are alluding to the fact that there is marital issues. And she's being very open about the fact that there are issues in her marriage at the moment. But now with this post, it's kind of guiding us into a different direction of her saying right now, like if you saw her from the dinner party from hell part two cannabis edition, you see where she's like, I can't afford to drink right now. I can't afford to be depressed. I cannot get in those feelings. And I think everybody immediately thought about Mauricio, but we totally panned over her friend because they haven't shown that situation yet on the show. Unless you remember it from when it happened, it probably wouldn't be the first thing that popped in your mind. I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are about her post, though. So go ahead, comment below, let us know. And definitely, before you go, smash that like button, show some love. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. And if you didn't check out Hot Messy Topics today, then go be a part of the Replay Crew. I love you guys, and we'll see you next time.